Join me in prayer. Join me in lifting up the King of Kings. Father, I just thank you. Yeshua, Yahweh, Jesus, I thank you for being here today, for meeting with us. I thank you that wherever we go, we take you with us. And wherever we put our feet, Yahweh, we stand in authority with you. We thank you for, um, for this county, that it stands for freedom that these business owners here today are standing for freedom. We thank you that we have many healthcare professionals that stand for freedom and pastors that are willing to stand in the gap and stand for freedom and those that are willing to cry out for the unborn today as well. I just thank you that you give us a voice, that you give us a platform and that you give this uh, reverberation that goes out in this county. I thank you that this is a powerful movement, that this doesn't just end here today, Father, that this begins the earthquake that happens throughout our nation. Amen. I thank you that you are the one in the midst and you are the one doing these powerful works. Many of you felt trapped, angered, in despair and not knowing what to do, not knowing where to go or how to expend that energy. And we're here to say that you're not alone today and we're gonna make a shift in our culture Amen. starting today. There are many problems with this presidential order. One, it is illegal as an overreach of governmental authority and carries grave concerns about medical privacy and discrimination based on medical status. Two, it is immoral, but the mandate of forced immunization is equally abhorrent and specifically intrudes on the individual's rights to protect themselves and their families according to the dictates of their own conscience. I've had had a lot of people concerned that why is churches up here on an event like this? Well, I can tell you, according to scripture, that governments are established by God. And so in that sense, the church has a responsibility um, to be up here like this. Um, I'm just up here to say we, we strongly support freedom of conscience and freedom to, to choose one's own um, decisions on this issue. And so I hope and pray that our community will support that as well. We support the First Amendment, the freedom to, of speech, freedom of assembly. We will keep our church open. It is unlawful to try and close them, and we will continue to keep ours open as we have over the past year and a half. We just want to stand up for our freedom. Um, I don't believe anybody should be forced into putting something on their face. I'm seeing a lot of um, intimidation, people being humiliated into um, getting a vaccination. My mother is at an assisted living. They make her sit by herself when everyone else can sit at a table. Well, now we're in 2021 and we thought 2020 was bad. Now it's 2021. All the healthcare workers that put their lives on the line, frontline workers, are now going to be dismissed if they don't take the jab. He said the most important personal property is your conscience. And if anybody anybody wants to violate that they're violating your rights and that is just not okay that there's no neutral on this issue anymore it's you know you can't steal second with your foot on first you have to either believe in big government and taking away choice and socialism or you believe in capitalism and choice and america and freedom and so there's there's no safe safe spot on this side there's no being on the fence anymore. Um, I just want to say I am honored to share this day with fellow business owners who are standing against dis discrimination for a people for their medical status. But we need to do more than just stand united against this type of discrimination. We have community members that are losing their jobs, their livelihoods, their ability to take care of their families. What we need to do is reach out to each of those community members and take them under our wing, give them a job, help them find a job, or better still, help mentor them to become successful business owners so we have more businesses that stand up against this discrimination. For we are the Liberty Leaders of Mesa County. Thank you. Awesome. Every one of you out here is here because you're trying to stand up for our rights and our freedoms as Americans. Events like this show us, or show others in our local community, that it's okay to stand up for freedom. Tyranny stops when people stand up and fight for what they believe in. Do you know why we wear a red stripe?
stripe on our trousers to show the blood we've shed. It is the warrior who has guaranteed your freedom, not the pastors, not the churches, not the businesses, and especially not the politicians. 22 veterans in active duty commit suicide a day, 156 in one three-month period. DOD has the wrong idea. We need to be taking care of the troops and not issuing unconstitutional mandates. The biggest priority I have is to keep my brothers and sisters safe and healthy. And if you see a veteran, that's what you want to do. You want to thank them for being willing to write a blank check for your lives. The majority of the media is controlled by major corporations who are not on your side. In addition, airlines, social media companies, and even many of your employers are against the freedom you're fighting for. I'm pro-human, I'm pro-immune. I believe that we are built stronger than we think we are. And I think we're being tested, mind, body, and spirit at this point, for our strength to come forward. Tyranny has been around for a long time. It's been around since the beginning of time. This is nothing new, it's just new to us. You know, it's on our home soil. And I believe that it's time that we reject fear and embrace faith. And we come together and we start speaking our mind in whatever way that we can. To come up here really is an honor and a privilege and to live in this country and to live in this county is a huge privilege. We've got, this is such a great place. And I'm so thankful for people like Cody Davis and some of our other representatives that can come here and, and speak for us. Um, but if for some reason they can't pull it off, God bless our second amendment. We are not Australia. Right. Amen, brother. I've also been involved with some of these um, medical workers who are facing mandates and now it's coming to everybody's front door it seems like and I I hear you know the desperation but I hear a lot of people saying I can't believe it's come to this I can't believe that this is where we're at in America in 2021 we are a culture for almost 50 years now who has not placed a high value a high enough value on every aspect of life and so when I look at this, I think this is the next logical step. When we have a culture that doesn't value life, then we see that people are expendable. And we have a, a, an administration that now says almost a third of the U.S. population is expendable or their health is expendable because we don't value we don't value life any longer as a culture. But we are changing that. We are like Daniel said, we are Gideon's army and we are the ones churning the tide against that. But it all starts with valuing life at every end of the spectrum. And so if we don't value our unborn, if we don't value our elderly, our disabled, our veterans, our homeless, our, you know, the list can go on and on. If we don't afford them the same freedom, the same protection under the law, then what's to say that a tyrant in DC can't take away your rights to, to make your own choices over your own body and your own health. And where there is risk, there should be choice. You know, even if our laws don't change, which we are praying hard they do, it's the hearts that need to change. And, and the community support for people in these positions as well, they, they know that they're not alone. They know that they have a choice and they're not forced into this. So I just want you to know, my prayers are with everybody facing this mandate. I 100% agree. Stand firm. Stand your ground. You are not alone. And we are actively going to be patronizing these businesses that are pushing back. So God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Andrea. Andrea. Let me start by saying I think we can all agree on one thing, and that is that we want the government's thumb um, off of us. Um, that's the whole. That's the whole American. 
That's the whole great American experience is to let people live in freedom and, and make their own choices. There is a basic hatred for personal freedoms today. And it's generally someone who has already bought into a regulation, a mandate, or a way of living who wants to force that way of living, that mandate or regulation on another person because they think it's the right thing to do. You don't persuade someone through force, that's called tyranny. You don't persuade, persuade someone with coercion, that destroys public trust. You don't persuade people through a contradicting message. The today is the freedom to choose, the right to choose for yourself and not have your conscience violated. That's the entire point. We need to continue to fight, stand our ground. I believe that all of this can and will be done, and it's through the efforts of fine people like you, who I have an immense amount of respect for. You're putting your life, your livelihoods, your paychecks, your jobs, all on the line. But we've ignored the God of who is, and the God of who is has established his authority on this earth. Thy kingdom come is here right now for the believers that have made covenant and walk in that kind of faith. And it's time that we start believing that we have the authority over injustice. And injustice is what God has set before us because he said, I set before you life and death. I set before you blessings and curses. But you know what? We get to choose. And he said, choose. And he even said, I'll give you a hint, choose life. And we have been, we have been the silent majority because we have been called Christians. And Christians go to church and are being good. Don't mix politics with religion. We've got too many pastors who are afraid to preach the gospel. They're going to they're gonna entertain and pacify their church because they don't know how to live for God. Because I don't care if you're Baptist or Methodist or Lutheran or Pentecostal or, or Sabbath keeper. I don't really care. But if you love God with all your heart, you're my brother. Amen. And we need to love God with all our heart. Right now, there's too many, too many pastors and clergy in this valley that support injustice, that support abortions, support the, uh, the, the realms of death. And I believe that God's going to move in a mighty way. And we're going to see the revival of God not so much uh, on the unsaved. I believe the revival of God is going to see, see the saved people get on fire for God. Amen. So I'm going to go to prayer. We're not here about about the vaccine we're here about God's authority Amen. we're here to see God's rights be reestablished to the church for a second take your hands and look at your hands rub them together praise God that's the anointing oil of God and say these hands are ordained by God and what I put my hands to are now anointed because I'm anointed because I'm, a, I'm not a beggar, I'm a child of the king, praise God. So we're going to go to the king. So if you will, grab hands with somebody else and tell them I'm contagious. Because where I go, I spread the gospel. Where I go, the presence of God is, and, and God has said, you should be contagious because God said, you're not just a, a, little, a little nothing. You're the power of this world. You are the light of the world. You're the authority of God. You're the presence of God. Where you go, Jesus said, you're going to bear witness, which means where you go, the presence of God goes because I'm on fire for God. Somebody say, I'm on fire for God. Look at this guy walking around with a yellow star. What's wrong with this guy? You know what that star represents? His rights have been taken away and now he's segregated. It's coming unless we as, a, as the authority of God on this earth begin to change things and turn the tide. Because God is God and God wants believers to get out of their little, their little church and get on fire for God and spread the gospel. Where you go is the authority of God. Where you go is power 
and, and God's giving the power to the bride, and the bride is here, right? Yes. Amen. And the spirit and the bride say, Bo, which means come. And God's, God's calling you to let people know that God is here and God is coming. Praise God. We want to see injustice removed from the land and in the last days. And I pray right now that ministers and pastors and clergy get on fire for God and begin to preach the gospel of God and to stand on injustice and know that they have the authority from God himself who's been given to the, to the bride. And may the bride be on fire for God. May each of you walk in that anointing and blessing. Would you look at the person on your left and the right and say, Praise God, you're awesome. Thank you, Daniel. Are you ready? Then shout freedom. One, two, three. <laughs>